Nityanandan. This is Chinitya Maya Titananda for NTV News live from Dhyanapida Masham Vidit. It's Thursday, June 2nd, 2011. The headlines in the morning satsang, Swamiji continued on the topic What are the three kinds of karma? Today's miracle news Hani, Viputi, and Kumkum and Rudraksha in Oman and Turkey. Research report from San Jose on Kundalini awakening and mitochondria. N Siddha, new life to ancient system of health. Now for the main news. In the morning satsang, Swamiji continued on the topic What are the three kinds of karma? Another beautiful discourse where Swamiji said Your life is not predetermined or frozen as you feel. It is a freedom. Only because it is a freedom, you have the possibility for enlightenment. Possibility for extraordinary powers exist because it is a freedom. Possibility for continuity, expansion and transformation exists because it is a freedom. Possibility for continuity, possibility for expansion, possibility for transformation is all one and the same. Understand, continuity means the possibility for you to happen again and again and again. All civilizations which had a strong contentment, happiness, fulfillment, believe in the possibility of continuity. Please understand. All happy civilizations. I was going through some of the World Health Organization's researches. The countries where people are completely happy, satisfied, content. All of them believe in continuity. Continuity means possibility of transformation. Possibility of evolving. Possibility of raising yourself. The mind which conspires never trusts the possibility of continuity. Please understand. The mind which creates conspiracy. I wanted to define conspiracy. Because conspiracy is directly related to karma. Conspiracy means not being straight either to the people who live around you or the society in which you live or the community in which you live or to your own body or your own mind. Unfortunately, when you conspire against the society or the house or the family or the friends or the people or community in which you are living, the habit of conspiring gets into your system like a poison. The conspiracy against the community or the known individuals becomes a poison. You start conspiring against your own mind, against your own body. I tell you, once in a while the negative ideas you are ready to support gets into your system when a chance comes it comes up and plans against you if you miss the morning session you can watch it again on NTV at 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time the talks will also be available on our Life Bliss Foundation channel on YouTube now for the interesting part Today's Miracle News Report. So let's start the satsang with our news. <laughs> in Turkey, one of our devotee Rahans, a Rahan has received Vibhuti in the hand. In Los Angeles, Sarvasmaranas Guru Padaka received sandalwood powder. And in Oman, Nithi Devi received Vibhuti, Kumkum and Honey. As I said, this next one week, I am going to be teleporting continuously Rudrakshas. So today again, Malaysia, 
ஓமன் சனுசே லாஸ் ஏஞ்சலிஸ் ஒஹாயோ ஃபீனிக்ஸ் சியாட்டில் ஆல் வில் ரிசீவ் ருத்ராட்ச ஐ எம் புஷிங் இட் ஐ வில் ஸ்டார்ட் டுடே டெலிபோட்டிங் த பனி என்ட்ரி சீட் ஆல்சோ we got a report during the morning satsang that hani vibhuti and kumkum was continuously appearing on manitya devi's hands this was followed by a beautiful panchamukhi rudraksha on her palms she only missed out on turmeric and rice maybe the next day we also got a report from tarke that vibhuti appearing on the palms of our city coordinator from there we also have some research news for you we got another report from san jose from dr john who is doing a research in san jose vedic temple on kundalini awakening by reading the brain waves using q e e g we have some interesting analysis done by dr john and the experiences of the devotees who took part in this research let us take a look Okay. Uh first of all I want to thank all of you here at the San Jose Vedic Temple for setting up this wonderful opportunity to pursue more research with Swamiji's program of um really transformation human transformation the, the potential to wake up and to be ready for <clears throat> the next uh ride in this amazing fast changing world um tonight i had the honor of working with raj mukta and shrika who are all very good subjects what that means is they let me put all this paste and cap and wires on them without complaining and then uh we were able to obtain a baseline recording hopefully they weren't meditating already but you can't be sure because you guys like like to go there right away and then the three subjects we did two we can only record one at a time so the two gentlemen had the caps first and then mukta had the cap at the end but the design of the the test was to record those moments when they go into kundalini activation and i'm beginning to get a feeling for what this looks like now uh you can see the movements and in some instances they build and they get quite vigorous and the subjects you know you for example would be two or three feet from your spot and moving around so technically to record a good quality eg is quite challenging under those conditions because you can't have the subject moving around very much however 
I'm delighted to say that I, I can record the initial burst of activity before it gets too large to, uh, to shake quite vigorously. And sometimes the wires pull off and uh, so we get disconnections and electrodes popping and all that. I'm also very thrilled that the data that was recorded tonight resembles the data recorded last week. So last week uh, I was able to use two out of three recordings. One recording was not of sufficiently good quality to really be much, uh, much useful. But the, the other two, uh, I've even summarized them and, and pasted some raw EG samples which I shared earlier and we can, we can look at those if there's time too. But what this, this is beginning to look like is this Kundalini has a EEG signature that appears to be consistent and repeatable between subjects and this is exciting because this is exactly what you want to find when you're doing research you want to be able to replicate your findings so if we do a, a few more here and then uh, I get data for example from the LA temple and we begin to see the same pattern then we really got some exciting signs so I'm hopeful that's <coughs> going to be the case. Now, uh, before we go into showing some actual raw data and putting it up for everyone to see and, and me pointing out what I, what I see and hopefully explaining a little bit about what got recorded, we were starting a very interesting conversation. and. I want all of you to participate, but uh, I guess Mukta took the lead. I want to know what do you experience subjectively when the Kundalini arousal is triggered? So, give us your account. Well, um, I have to say that you are moving in the zone where, like, you're going beyond the, the words, like, in the zone where there is, like, no mind and it's kind of verbally you cannot really describe your your kind of joining the oneness and openness open space where you cannot really verbally define exactly what it is because it's way bigger than than the word can describe so it's ineffable yes now uh, another uh, interesting point that I was curious about is how you experience it, the temporal course, uh, you experience it lasting many seconds or just a few seconds or is it difficult to put a time estimation? What is, what is your experience? Even with the, with the time estimation, I think it, it varies. Sometimes I feel I'm quite a long time in that zone. And then uh, once I'm there, I uh, kind of my logic overlaps that state and pulls me back. And then I go again up and staying in that zone. But uh, so it's uh, sometimes it's seconds, sometimes it's way longer. But uh, I cannot really exactly tell about the time. Likewise. likewise. How about you, Rush? Likewise, sometimes it stays very short period, and sometimes it goes for a long time and and when Swamiji does that or when Swamiji blows that's when it happens intensely but then if I visualize and strongly if I visualize and strongly feel connected to Swamiji also it happens and it stays longer but uh, his physical uh, uh, um, uh, cues yes. uh, drive me to that state right away drive me to that state. And, and as she was saying when it happens there are no thoughts, but I'm aware. So I don't know how to describe that. I'm completely aware. You're aware? These sandals are aware where Swami is, and whichever way I was sitting in, I would move towards Swamiji. So, so with some kind of gravitational pull, pulling me towards Swamiji. Uh, 
Um, are you aware of the uh, other people sitting next to you? I'm not aware of other people sitting next to me. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it happened so many times in India when I was there and same thing ha is happening here too. Like in India I would sit like far away and with, uh, with uh, you know, eyes closed with a ribbon, ribbon tied to the eyes. And when I wake up, when I take the ribbon off, I would be right right by Swamiji. <laughs> I would be here and Swamiji would be sitting here. And today also I was kind of noticing, I would sit there and like I would make a U-turn and come like this. Right? Swamiji so, was on, on the screen. But I was going towards his sandals. <coughs> his sandals. <laughs> padukas. You so, mean the Padukas? Yeah, Padukas. Swamiji's Padukas. This is something that we want to study, you know. It, it sounds like you're in a force field, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you experience it? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Like there's some energy field that is everywhere and that is maybe even the laws of physics are a little different there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's models like that of, of mm -hmm. physics being non-local, you know, mm -hmm. during those kinds of events and healing. Okay, so you can start. I can start. All right. So uh, very quickly, I'm just going to review last week because I I went and looked at the data and I just did a little quick cut and paste. So this is a typical baseline control. This was uh, Bra Brahmin or Brahmanya. Brahmanya. All right. And so the scale is 100 microvolts and the speed is 30 millimeters per second. And this is what it would look like if you rescaled it to 300 microvolts. In other words, the waveforms are <coughs> barely detectable, they're tiny, huh? so you don't see very many uh, interesting waveforms. And so this is the scale <coughs> that I had to use to be able to pick up the Kundalini signals. And so here's a pretty clean example. It starts out, you see, with synchronous activity, all channels, there's 19 channels indicated here on the left. If you take a look at these waveforms, these positive deflections, they appear to be, yeah. Thank you. They appear to be all occurring synchronously, all right? So just follow this group here. So they're face locked. So this is a generalized burst. And if you count the peaks, one, two, three, four, five. Let's find another good example here. One, two, three, four, five. They're between five and six or so per second. So that's theta frequency. So these are synchronous high <coughs> voltage theta bursts that are being recorded across all channels. Now, I can further analyze this and I can, I can do a little bit of uh, detective work to locate the sources. So, you see again, uh, one, two, three, four, five, roughly. One, two, three, four, five. This is a shorter burst. This is lasting a second and perhaps total 1.2 or 1.3 seconds. And now, the data that I'm going to show you from today has some examples that look like this. Here's another one uh, where this is also at 300. These are a little smaller in amplitude, but same basic pattern. So, from a neurophysiological point of view, this is fascinating because it indicates that the brain is going to the same place when this Kundalini activation occurs. And especially, I feel more confident in saying that after tonight's data because it looks very similar to this. Uh, we had some very vigorous 
Kundalini activation, so the data is not as clean, but, but uh, in the case of Mukta, it is. Uh, I mean, we're going to start with that one, because it's the cleanest record to, to share with you right now. Okay. all kinds of problems of uh, wires coming off and uh, ear electrodes disconnecting. And, uh, you have to be very attentive to things that are going wrong so that you can correct them. I mean, of course, okay, this is uh, Mukta's baseline eyes closed and it's not a perfect recording, there's a bit of muscle artifact, but it looks pretty good. In general, you can see alpha bursts, okay, here, and they move to central parietal sites, infernal sites. These are 19 channels. This is like putting 19 microphones over a symphony orchestra, okay? Because each one of these lines contains many frequencies. They're all superimposed. They're all mixed in. So, you do a fast Fourier transform, a frequency analysis, to separate the frequency components. So, just for fun, let's let's do that. It'll reveal what frequencies are dominant. Okay. So here we can add color to the different frequency bands. So what are we looking at here? Each one of these graphs is one of electrode location. The electrodes are in this <coughs> in this arrangement. It's called a 1020 international system. So F7, F3, Fc would be F7, Fz. Z is the midline. Everyone follow? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we would have left brain. <coughs> the numbers are all uh, odd numbers and even numbers are right brain sites. <coughs> so what you see here is a very dominant alpha peak shown as yellow. Ah, just like you. Uh, her alpha is fast. Remember, we saw you. You have a similar kind of pattern. I wonder if it, if it happens because of meditating a lot. That's another question too. <clears throat> so what I'm talking about here is that this is 10 hertz. In other news, we would like to introduce to you N Siddha, an ancient system of medicine practiced in South India for thousands of years to hundreds of millions of people. 
It was developed and evolved by a stream of enlightened masters from this region who are called Siddhas. This is the first medical system to define best health as the perfect state of physical, psychological, social and spiritual component of human being. Swamiji, who is a Siddha himself, has initiated the project of reviving Siddha system. His tremendous knowledge in this field and his interest and enthusiasm will be reflected in Siddha system too. As a part of this project, the organization shares the Siddha system, works with the Siddha doctor and develops new Siddha products that are proven scientifically. Also, as a part of this project, plants and herbs which can help in making the Siddha medicine have already arrived at the ashram. Very soon, we will have our own garden of herbs. Nityanandan tanda uyar lingam Adi lingam, chodi lingam, arpuda lingam Jnana lingam, nityanandan ananda lingam Adi lingam, chodi lingam, arpuda lingam Jnana lingam, nityanandan ananda lingam And that's all from us for tonight. Before we end our news, let's hear a quote from Swamiji. Seriousness is paying undue importance to something at the cost of everything else. Thank you for joining us. 
Tune in for more updates tomorrow on NTV Nityananda.